What's going on peeps? I'm here to discuss an artist that has been in the music scene for decades, grinding album after album to get to where he is now. A man who went from an underground hip hop artist to one of the most famous faces in country today. Quite the switch there. So how and why did he do it? Well, Jelly Roll's story is a bit of a lengthy one, spanning decades as I said. I want to cover the most important details that led to this point. If you want to hear more about his story, he's got a documentary out called Save Me. With that being said, this is how Jelly Roll transitioned from hip hop to country. Jason Bradley D. Ford was born on December 4th, 1984. He is currently 38 years old. He was raised in Nashville, Tennessee within the Antioch neighborhood, the same area Yellow Wolf grew up in. The neighborhood is filled with crime, having rates that exceed 25% of the national average. His family struggled with money and mental health issues, leading to Jason turning to crime. After an attempted marijuana robbery at the age of 14, he and many others were detained and charged with numerous charges of marijuana possession and attempted robbery. He dropped out of school in the ninth grade. Through these struggles with addiction, in the law, Jason found a love for music. He loved rocking out to 3-6 Mafia and UGK. Throughout 2003 to 2005, he put out three mixtapes that he'd sell out of his car. It featured standard hip-hop content about being a street rebel. The following 10 years were spent in and out of the juvenile detention facilities in jail on accusations such as violent robbery and possession with the intent to sell. He saw those years behind bars as a growing period that he needed to sell down because he was throwing his life away. Instead of waking up on his 16th birthday with a new car, he woke up laying on his cell bed with nobody to celebrate with. No prom, no graduation. The day he knew he needed to better himself was when he found out he had a daughter that was born. Bailey Ann was brought into his world in 2008 when he was 24. He knew he could no longer be selfish and that another human was relying on him. It was time for him to take life more seriously and to kick this music career into gear. He called a friend from prison and asked him to create a Facebook and YouTube page for him. From there, he put out several mixtapes throughout the late 2000s and early 2010s, building a community from the ground up. He'd soon become known as Jelly Roll, a name his mother gave him when he was a young, chubby kid. His first spark of virality was through a collaboration with Memphis rapper Lil White in 2010. White helped put on Jelly Roll to a bigger audience with a music video being viewed millions of times. He was now becoming a frequent collaborator with various underground artists artists like Tech 9 Haystack, and Exhibit. This was done through consistent release of mixtapes and collaboration albums independently. He was doing tours across the country to get his name out there. Despite his hopes of getting out of legal trouble, he got in trouble with Waffle House in 2013. Whiskey, Weed, and Waffle House was the title of his mixtape before it was changed to Whiskey, Weed, and Woman, as the restaurant threatened legal action due to the usage of its name. It was then replaced with a cease and desist mark. 2014 saw the release of the solo album Biggest Loser in the EP Whiskey Sessions. This EP saw Jelly experiment with singing alongside an acoustic guitar. The first glimpse of his country transition, maybe? Then then there was Sobriety Sucks two years later and Addiction Kills a year after. That's a good evolution right there. In between these releases, he met the love of his life, Bunny XO. Bunny was a fan who showed up to a 2015 concert. This led to them talking backstage. However, Bunny was already in a relationship, so they became just decent friends. Let's just say she broke things with that guy not too long after. Bunny shot her shot with the singer and things became romantic. Jelly Roll was offered to crash at her place for a night when he didn't have that much money. The spark between the unlikely two was there and they found love. After a year of dating, Jelly Roll proposed to Bunny in 2016 during a Yellow Wolf and Deftones concert in Las Vegas. They decided to get married that night in a courthouse nearby. They have since renewed their vows in 2023 and Bunny legally became his daughter's stepmom. You may put your tissues away now. Next up is his string of collaboration albums with Struggle Jennings throughout 2017 and 2018. The more music he released, the more he was starting to appear on those billboard charts. His song which often cover his personal experiences such as battles of addiction,
addiction, mental illness, and family connections had found an audience. He was using his position to promote these issues, being outspoken about his support for mental health awareness and addiction rehabilitation. He knew he wasn't a perfect person, a sinner in fact, but it's all about recovery. As he was getting older, in his 30s now, he started to appreciate his singing voice a bit more. He had an interest in leaning into country soul and southern rock style instrumentation. He's never been one afraid to genre bend throughout his catalog, so this wasn't surprising for his fans. He has always had a southern accent living in Nashville, so the southern crowd was on board for what's to come. Jelly Roll has had dreams of being a country artist, but he wasn't sure how he was going to pull it off when he first started his music career. He was talking about destroying his neighborhood and being braggadocious, after all. So after doing a little hip-hop with elements of rock and blues, finding his sound momentarily before showing off his vocals on those Whiskey Session EPs, the music evolved as the man himself evolved. He wants to use country music as a way to find faith, get clean, and mature. It was the music that followed his heart and spirit. He didn't want to be that rebellious teenager he used to be. He wanted to help and heal people through his music as well as himself. That should explain his country transition. He didn't plan on leaving hip hop completely behind though, because that would be leaving out his OG fans, a beautiful disaster in 2020 right before the lockdown. This was his first album to reach the Billboard 200, debuting at number 97. But throughout lockdown, he settled down and found time to reflect on himself, pushing to release self-medicated in October. The album's mostly rap, but take a look at the song Save Me. I'm a lost cause Baby, don't waste your time on me I'm so damaged beyond now that's a curveball. It was inspired by the demons of his father's passing last year and other dark areas of his mind. He created the song as a way to get them out of him. It's no shocker that this song exploded in popularity with his fans praising his bravery and showing this side of himself. This video currently has 190 million views on YouTube and was certified platinum. It's only grown as the years go by, just letting you know. His TikTok account is also very popular. He has teased new unreleased songs and embraced his audience with his unapologetic humor. This inspired his next album, Ballads of the Broken, in 2021. He also made his grand old oat free debut in November. By then, he secured a record deal with massive Nashville label Broken Bro Records. His first major label release was his first true country release with elements of pop. He was praised for his soulful and twangy vocals. One song specifically caught traction, Son of a Sinner. I'm just a long Son of a sinner Searching for new co-written with hit songwriter Ernest. The story is about Jelly Roll's personal life as a Tory musician and his personal struggle with right and wrong and drug addiction. He was drunk while recording the vocals. This broke him into country radio, impacting in March 2022. It swiftly climbed the genre's charts, hitting the Billboard Hot 100 for the first time in July. It would peak at number 31 on the all-genre chart and became his first country radio airplay number one. It has since been certified two times platinum. Jelly Roll knew that that country was his calling. Son of a Sinner was followed up in December with Need a Favor. It focuses on a man who is about to lose the love of his life and prays that God will do him a favor, but also admits that he doesn't deserve it and hopes to repent of his past actions. After all, he feels like he talks to God only when he needs a favor. It was a combination of country and rock that would soon become his biggest hit to date. It was his second number one on country radio and peaked at number 14 on the Hot 100. The music landscape knew that Jelly Roll was here to stay. He was selling out arenas across the country and won several awards at the CMT Music Awards, Male Video of the Year, Male Breakthrough Video of the Year, and Digital First Performance for Son of a Sinner. Thus came his 2023 album, Wit Sit Chapel, smashing in at number 3, selling 90,000 units in its first week, 10 times larger than his previous best first week. The album contained the smash single of course, as well as a re-recording of Save Me that featured rising country star Lainey Wilson and a country rap track with Yellow Wolf called Unlive. 
the latter is for the OGs. Jelly Roll is on fire and will likely continue down this country path. He's been through so much in his life and it must feel so good to be where he is now. He's built up an organic fan base independently through hip hop, experimented with rock, and then made a full switch to country music when he knew it was time to mature. It's a beautiful story for sure and if I missed out on any key details, let me know. I was always curious about how this man got to this point in his career and this deep dive I did gave me an answer. Thank you for watching this video. What's your favorite Jelly Roll song? I'll see you all next time. Peace. Thank you.